Let's say you're a first year financial advisor in your 20s and you like to earn $120,000 in your first year. What do you need to do? Hi guys, I'm Yu Chuan. Welcome to my channel where I uncover the secrets to financial advisory and adulting in Singapore. So some time ago, I shared about my $80,000 investment portfolio on my Instagram. And from there, I got a lot of questions asking me, so hey, how much do you actually earn as a Singaporean financial advisor? Oh, and by the way, right, if you haven't followed me on Instagram, here's my handle. With that said, I've always taken pride in radical transparency. And in keeping with that spirit, I will be doing a tell-all today on how much a financial advisor actually makes in Singapore. Now, if you're interested in a career of financial advisory, but you're a little bit anxious, because you know there's no fixed salary, but you've got to pay your bills, you've got to pay your loans, you've got to pay your expenses, then this video is for you. Now, first up, commission rates. So a very important term to understand here is first year commission or FYC in short. Now that is the commission that a financial advisor earns in their first year. So for most companies, an agent's FYC is what they would use to measure the agent's performance. Now different products that different advisors sell will have varying commission rates. Let's say a single premium product will offer a one-off commission, typically under 5%. So to illustrate that, if I sell a $100,000 single premium product at a 4% commission rate, then I will be receiving a $4,000 commission paycheck one-off. Now on the other hand, there are also what we call regular premium products for which the client pays on a regular basis. So commission rates for such regular premium products, they diminish across the years. So on average, a good estimate of the commission rate is about 30% in the first year. Now that brings me to the next point for all you aspiring financial advisors, the recurring income. So this mainly comes from regular premium products, which again, offers diminishing returns over the years. So for example, let's say an advisor closes a $3,000 regular premium product at a 30% commission rate in the first year, then they will be receiving $900 in commissions. And in the subsequent year, the commission will be halved, right, to $450 and so on. Now, typically, this recurring income will end after the sixth year. Now, here comes the most common concern, which is the base pay. So I'm gonna be here to set the record straight once and for all. Financial advisory is a purely commission-based job. There's no base pay for financial advisors, at least in the long run. There are, however, base pay schemes that companies offer to newly minted financial advisors in their first two years. You do have to meet a certain quota or target in order to qualify for that base pay. So there are a number of schemes you can choose from for let's say a two, three or four thousand dollars pay scheme and that amount will determine your monthly target. So for example, let's say I get a three thousand dollars base pay scheme, then my monthly target will be three thousand dollars in first year commissions. Once I earn that $3,000 in commissions, my company will pay me that $3,000 base pay on top of my commissions paycheck. So in other words, I'm doubling my income, right? Just by being on this base pay scheme. Now I want to stress again, this is only available for new advisors. So if you're already an advisor and you're beyond the second year of your advisory career, this is not for you. All right, next up, bonuses. So different companies have different bonus structures, but usually they either calculate your bonus through a credit system or through your FYC. So essentially, the higher your credit or the higher your FYC, then the higher your bonus percentage will be. So on average, right, you can expect about 30 to 40% bonus rate on the commissions that you have earned for that year. So for example, let's say you clear $50,000 in commissions and your bonus rate is 30%, then you will be getting a $15,000 bonus. Okay, finally, if you put all of that together, you get your gross income. And the great thing about this is that with a sales job, there is no limit to how much your gross income can be, right? It is directly proportional to the effort that you put into your career. So what we like to do is we work backwards from a personal income goal in order to determine how much in commissions we want to achieve. 
Let's say you're a first year financial advisor in your 20s and you like to earn $120,000 in your first year. What do you need to do? Well, the first thing, let's assume that you're on a $3,000 base pay scheme, which amounts to be $36,000 in your first year. That leaves us with $84,000 to earn. Assuming a 30% bonus rate, you will have to clear $64,615 in first year commissions, which works out to be $5,384 a month. So to put that into context, uh, an average case size a first year financial advisor can expect in their 20s is around $1,000 to $1,500. So to hit your income goal of $120,000 in your first year, you will need to close around four to five cases every single month. Now, imagine you are in your early 20s, a newly minted financial advisor, and you're earning $10,000 a month, and that $10,000 actually scales the longer you stay in the industry. Sounds pretty darn amazing, right? Remember, that is just your gross income. So now, let's talk about the net income which accounts for your expenses, your CPF, and your taxes. Now, for financial advisors, there are a number of different expenses that you will need to incur. So think about stuff like gifts for your clients, mooncakes, Christmas gifts, or maybe even a secretary, right? You might also want to hire a social media manager like how dear Jeremy. <laughs> right, so all these are inevitable expenses that count as long-term investments into your business. Here's a word of advice. Do not squander away the base pay that you receive in your first year or your second year. Take that as a grant to support your business. Invest it back into your career. So as a rule of thumb, you should be reinvesting 10 to 15% of your income back into your business. Now, if there are two things that are certain in life, they will be death and taxes. So, in Singapore, taxes follow an income bracket, which you can find in the link down below. So in summary, the more you earn, the more taxes you pay, up to 22%. And well, if you don't already know this, financial advisors are considered self-employed individuals. So there is absolutely no CPF contribution from your company. Now that is also why a lot of younger financial advisors, they feel like they're very rich, you know, or, or they're balling compared to all their peers. But what they forget to account for is the extra 17% employer CPF contribution that they are missing out on. In other words, you should be earning at least 17% more than your peers to make up for the lack of employer CPF contribution. If you are a young or aspiring financial advisor, please, 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 don't forget to make your voluntary CPF contributions. Now, it will help you to reduce your taxes. It will also help to build your reserves for your housing and your retirement. So, to conclude, how much does a financial advisor in Singapore really earn? Let's go back to the first year income goal of $120,000. Factoring in our 10% in business expenses, $5,760 in compulsory Medisafe contributions, and finally, about $3,000 in taxes, your net income is a whopping $99,240. Of course, before any voluntary CPF contributions that you would like to make. There you have it. And I think what I really love about this career is that you are 100% in control you decide how much you want to earn. And that's all from me for this video. So for all you existing financial advisors out there, I'd love for you to share in the comments below your income goal for the current year. And if you are an aspiring financial advisor, feel free to share with me any questions you might have, whether it be in the comments below or through a DM on Instagram. So lastly, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more similar content. With that, See you soon.